at our maps. When we want to represent the Earth or a portion of it, we usually use a map. A map is a flat piece of paper that has been mass produced by several methods to show information about the Earth. We could use a globe, but they're too bulky to carry around and they cannot show a lot of detail. Maps can show the entire Earth on a single piece of paper, or they can focus in on just your neighborhood. If the map shows only your neighborhood or the town you live in, the map will be able to show more information. This is called a large scale map. Maps that show continents or hemispheres, or even the whole planet, are called small scale maps. Maps have been made of everything from pieces of palm fronds and shells like the early Polynesians used to show the islands in their part of the Pacific Ocean to stone or clay tablets used by early inhabitants of Europe and Asia to show river valleys. But by far the easiest maps to use have been made on paper or parchment. They could be folded or rolled up and were therefore easy to carry. Early paper maps were drawn by hand by map makers or cartographers and were made from their personal knowledge or sometimes assumptions of what the Earth looked like. Looking at some of these early maps, you can see that what they thought the land masses looked like was grossly incorrect. As people set off exploring places far from their homes, charting the coasts of continents and crossing oceans, the more accurate their maps became in showing the shapes and sizes of the continents and oceans. As explorers moved inland from the coasts and began crisscrossing the interiors of the land masses, more of the details of the continents began appearing on maps. Some parts of the United States were not fully explored and therefore correctly shown on maps until the late 1800s. One of the purposes of the Lewis and Clark expedition in the early 1800s was to chart the territory that the United States acquired from France in the Louisiana Purchase. The information that they brought back allowed map makers to show parts of the New World, almost virtually unknown except to Native Americans, all the way to the Pacific Ocean. What are some common types of map projections? One of the most common maps is a Mercator map. Gerardus Mercator, a Flemish cartographer, first produced it in 1569 to help navigators. As you can see on this map, all the lines of latitude are the same length as the equator. Although this causes a great amount of distortion at the outer edges of the map, this stretching causes compass bearings to be correct. Therefore, Mercator projections are useful as marine navigation charts. The distortion, however, makes them unsuitable for general use because shapes and sizes of land and water areas and distances are grossly inaccurate. The best example of this distortion can be seen by looking at Greenland. On a Mercator map, Greenland looks larger than South America when it is really closer in size to Mexico. Another type of map is the polar map. A polar map is shown as a round map with either the North Pole or the South Pole at the center. On a polar map showing the North Pole, you can see how close the continents in the Northern Hemisphere are to each other. This makes it useful for pilots who fly the polar routes. These polar routes actually cut flying time. For example, between cities in North America, Northern Europe, and Asia. A Mulweed map is an equal area map. This means that the land areas are shown correctly. On such a map, each area bordered by two parallels or lines of latitude and two meridians or lines of longitude is equal in area to any other area or block on the map. The disadvantages of this type of map are that it distorts directions, distances, and the shapes of land masses and is therefore unfit for navigation. It is frequently used to show world distribution of various things, such as religions or languages. Another common type of equal area projection is the broken equal area or interrupted map, such as the goods interrupted homolysine map, as shown here. The oceans are interrupted or broken. 
but the continental areas are correct and well shaped. This type of map is valuable for showing the world distribution of climate, precipitation, vegetation, or other data. The Robinson projection was developed by cartographer Arthur Robinson in 1963. It is a compromise projection that is considered a reasonable overall picture of the world. Even though it has some size distortion in the polar regions, countries and continents more closely match their true size. It is now often used for maps in educational materials and was even adopted by the National Geographic Society in 1988. What are some common types of maps? Political maps show boundaries between nations, states, or provinces, or even counties and cities. They use colors to show where one country or state ends and another begins. Look at this political map of the United States. Not only can you see the various states, but you can locate their capitals, shown as starred cities. Other major cities are also marked. Major rivers, lakes, and other bodies of waters are identified too. The Mississippi River, the Great Lakes, and the Gulf of Mexico are some examples of bodies of water labeled on this map. Now look at this map of Europe. What country is east of Portugal? If you said Spain, you are correct. What nation is between Austria and Poland? Yes, it is the Czech Republic. It is easy to see the different nations because of the use of colors. Can you find the river that flows through Paris, France? That's right, it's the Seine River. On political maps, rivers are shown as the blue. Physical maps also use color to show land elevations and water depths. They name many land forms and bodies of water. They can also identify countries and some major cities. If you look at this map of Europe, you can see where the Alps and the Pyrenees mountain ranges are located. You can also see the Seine River on this map as you did on the political map. The fjords of Norway are labeled and so is the North Sea between Norway and the British Isles. Most physical maps appear to be three-dimensional. These maps can also be called elevation or relief maps. By looking at the key or legend, you can see what the various color gradations stand for. Usually, the dark green areas are the lowest in elevation, and mountains are shown as brown areas. Water depths are shown in shades of blue, with the darker blue showing greater depths. Some physical maps even show the various ridges and other ocean floor features, like the Mid-Atlantic Range. A topographical map is another type of map that shows elevation. They usually show a small area in great detail. Contour lines are their most distinctive feature. The curved lines connect points that are the same elevation. The closer the lines are to each other, the steeper the incline or slope. Some topo maps even show where man-made structures are located. Weather maps appear in most major daily newspapers. They can tell you many things about the weather that has occurred in your area yesterday and what it will probably be like today. Let's look at this weather map. It shows different temperature zones on a specific day. You can see the warmer areas and the cooler ones. You can also see where warm, cold, and stationary fronts are located. You can tell which is which by looking at the map legend. A front is a line of separation at the Earth's surface between cold and warm air masses. High and low pressure areas are labeled with the symbols H and L. Isobar lines are also shown on weather maps. Isobars show lines of equal pressure in the atmosphere. Weather maps can also indicate areas that experience rain, thunderstorms, snow, or ice. As you can see, these maps tell us a lot more than temperature. Like so many other maps, climate maps use colors to show different climate regions. Climate types can be grouped into categories that are defined by average temperatures and the amount of rainfall. This climate map of Asia shows that a large part of Southeast Asia has a humid subtropical climate. 
The extreme northern part of the continent has a tundra climate. Precipitation or rainfall maps use their colors to identify areas with different levels of average annual rainfall. The colors usually range from lighter to darker shades, indicating increased amounts of rain with darker colors. As you look at this map of Australia and its neighbors, you will see that a large area in the Australian interior receives very little rain, while the greatest portion of the island of New Guinea gets very heavy rain. Vegetation maps show the natural vegetation of a region. Natural vegetation refers to the types of plants that exist or existed in an area before being changed by man through farming or other modifications to the environment. Various types of natural vegetation include grasslands or savannas, steppes, broadleaf forest, tropical rainforest, and desert. Land use maps show how people make use of the land on which they live. Again, colors are used here to indicate the predominant type of activity. The land use shown could be of a general nature, such as grazing, ranching, or forest products. Or it could be specific, identifying areas where a certain crop, such as cotton or wheat, is grown. According to this land use map of Europe, we can see that in spite of the heavy industrialization of much of the continent, agriculture, the raising of crops and livestock, is still the predominant use of land on the continent. A population density map shows the average number of people living within a given area of the region covered by the map. This density is usually shown in one of two different ways. One type of map uses dots, with each dot representing a certain number of people. A large concentration of dots indicates a high concentration of people. As we can see from this population density map of the United States, there are large concentrations of people on the northeastern seaboard around New York, and another heavy concentration in the Chicago area at the southern tip of Lake Michigan. Another type of population density map uses colors to identify various levels of population. On these maps, the darker the color, the higher the population density. This population density map of the world shows that large parts of Europe, India, and China have very heavy population densities that are only duplicated in the largest cities of the rest of the world. This strange looking map is called a cartogram. It is a map that shows statistics geographically. While looking at a cartogram of the world's population, you can see that the countries are not shown in the way they usually are on a traditional map. Their size is not accurately rendered. Instead, nations with greater numbers of people are enlarged, and countries with lesser populations are made smaller. Some very small nations, such as Monaco, San Marino, and Andorra in Europe, are not even depicted. You can tell that China and India have the largest populations in the world. What nation in Africa has the largest population? The answer is Nigeria. Another very different looking map is the profile map, or cross-section diagram. These maps cut a land area in two so that you can see the area from a side view. They show how the land varies in altitude or elevation and the general shape of the land forms. As we can see from this profile map of South America, the Andes Mountains on the west coast are much higher than the Brazilian highlands on the east coast. What's the difference between product and resource maps? Both types of maps usually use symbols to show where resources are located and where products are manufactured. But a resource map will identify where such natural resources as coal, iron, diamonds, or gold are found, while a product map shows where manufactured products, such as steel or automobiles, are produced. Some product and resource maps use colors instead of symbols to identify areas that are the source of raw materials or products. On this resource map of South America, 
we can see that Venezuela has a lot of oil, as does Ecuador. Bolivia is rich in tin and Brazil in diamonds. What are some other types of specialty maps? Historical maps might show where political boundaries between countries used to be, or how the world was depicted by past cartographers. By looking at various maps depicting the changing face of Europe during the 20th century, we can see that Poland appeared on the map after World War I and came out of World War II with changed boundaries and less territory. Through the use of arrows, exploration maps show the routes that European explorers traveled as they discovered other parts of the world. This map shows the explorations of Vasco da Gama. He sailed from Portugal around the Cape of Good Hope to India in 1497 and 98. In 1519, Ferdinand Magellan left Spain to sail around the world. Magellan died in the Philippine Islands in 1521, but his crew completed the first circumnavigation of the world in 1522. Other specialty maps might show such things as the major religions of the world, the major languages spoken, developed nations, the Islamic world, third world nations, or wind and ocean currents, in short, a map can be used to present almost anything you want to show.